As we reflect on the departure of Jesus from his disciples after the resurrection, we find solace in the promise he made, a promise fulfilled on the day of Pentecost with the arrival of the Holy Spirit. This divine gift is not exclusive. Every child of God is entitled to partake in its blessings. Yet, in our times, many professing Christians fall short of experiencing the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. It is essential to recognize that speaking in tongues is not the sole indicator of the Holy Spirit's presence. The Apostle Paul's warning in 2 Timothy 3 about having a form of godliness without the power thereof should resonate with us. We must discern and seek the genuine Spirit of God amid the various spirits present in our world today. So how can you discern a person filled with the Holy Spirit? It goes beyond the superficial, it delves into the habits that manifest when the Spirit truly resides within. Before this start this video, please like this video. It will help us to reach all the people in the Word. In the last, I'll pray a strong and good prayer with you in Jesus' name. Stick around till the end and be open to receive the good things from this prayer. Habit number one, prayerful living. Have you ever paused to consider the profound impact of prayer in our lives? As we explore this foundational habit, let us turn to the words of Jesus in Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayerful living is not merely a routine. It is a dynamic conversation with our Creator. In the busyness of life, it is easy to be distracted, to prioritize our own plans over God's guidance. Yet Jesus' words remind us of the importance of vigilance in prayer. Prayer becomes the lifeline that connects us to the source of strength, wisdom, and grace. The Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18 reinforces the call to constant prayer. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This habit is not reserved for moments of crisis, but is to be woven into the fabric of our daily existence, a continual conversation with the one who sustains us. Prayerful living involves not only presenting our requests, but also listening for God's voice. It is an acknowledgement of our dependence on Him, recognizing that without His guidance, our efforts are futile. The Psalms, a rich source of inspiration, resonate with the psalmist's plea for God's guidance and presence in times of trouble. As we embrace the habit of prayerful living, we draw inspiration from Jesus Himself. In Luke 5.16 we learn that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places to pray. In the midst of his earthly ministry, Jesus prioritized communion with the Father, seeking direction, strength, and intimacy. Today, let us commit to cultivating this foundational habit to be people characterized by a spirit of prayer. In the quiet moments and the chaotic ones, let us turn our hearts and minds to God, seeking his wisdom, thanking him for his blessings, and surrendering our concerns. In prayerful living, we find not only a refuge in times of trouble, but also a source of joy, peace, and a deeper connection with our Heavenly Father. May our lives be marked by the rhythm of prayer, echoing the words of the psalmist, evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress and he hears my voice. Psalm 55, 17. May our continual prayer be a testament to our reliance on the Holy Spirit, guiding us on this journey of faith. Comment Amen if you believe. 2. Immersion in Scripture As we embark on this exploration, let us turn our attention to Psalm 119, 105, where we find these profound words, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Immersion in Scripture is not a mere intellectual exercise. It is a spiritual discipline that shapes our thoughts, attitudes, and actions. The Bible is not merely a collection of words. It is the living and active Word of God, capable of penetrating the depths of our souls. Hebrews 4.12 The psalmist in Psalm 1, 2, 3, describes the blessed person whose delight is in the law of the Lord. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Immersing ourselves in scripture involves more than casual reading. It requires meditation and reflection. It is about allowing the word of God to permeate our hearts and minds, guiding our decisions and shaping our character. The Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 3 16, 17 emphasizes the significance of scripture. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The habit of immersion in scripture is not about legalism, but about a genuine desire to know God and his will. Jesus in Matthew 4, 4 declared, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Just as physical nourishment sustains our bodies, the Word of God nourishes our spirits and strengthens our faith. In our busy lives, it is easy to neglect this crucial habit. However, the psalmist's words remind us that immersing ourselves in Scripture is like planting ourselves by streams of water, a continual source of life, growth, and fruitfulness. Today, let us commit to the habit of immersion in Scripture. May we approach God's Word with reverence and openness, allowing it to illuminate our path and draw us closer to Him. As we delve into the Scriptures, may we discover the profound truths that guide us on our journey of faith, and may our lives reflect the transformative power of God's Word. Amen. 3. Acts of Love and Kindness Have you ever pondered the significance of love in the life of a believer? In exploring this habit, let us turn to the words of Jesus in John 13:34. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Acts of love and kindness are not mere gestures. They are the outward expression of the love that flows from a heart transformed by the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, 23, the Apostle Paul highlights love as the first fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, as exemplified by Christ, is sacrificial and selfless. It goes beyond feelings and emotions, manifesting in tangible actions that benefit others. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7, often referred to as the love chapter, we find a profound description of love. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Acts of love and kindness are not limited to those within our immediate circles. They extend to strangers, enemies, and those society may overlook. Jesus in Matthew 25, 35, 36 teaches us about the transformative power of love in action. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. As we strive to embody this habit, let us remember that our acts of love and kindness are not meant to earn salvation, but to reflect the love we have received from God. The Apostle John succinctly captures this in 1 John 4.19. We love because he first loved us. Today, let us commit to a life marked by intentional acts of love and kindness. May our actions be a testament to the love of Christ dwelling within us, drawing others closer to the heart of God. In a world longing for love, let us be vessels of the transformative and redemptive love of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 4. Obedience to God's will. Let us turn to the example set by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Luke 22:42, we find Jesus in Gethsemane praying fervently, 
Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Obedience to God's will is not a mere compliance with rules. It is a heartfelt surrender to the divine plan. In Romans 12, 2, the Apostle Paul urges believers, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. God's will is not always easy to discern, but a person filled with the Holy Spirit seeks it earnestly, guided by a desire to align their life with God's purposes. The habit of obedience is rooted in trust, trusting that God's plan is far greater than our own understanding. Jesus exemplified perfect obedience throughout his earthly ministry. In John 6.38, he declares, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. His entire life was a testament to the principle of surrendering personal desires for the fulfillment of God's greater plan. In our daily lives, obedience to God's will may require stepping out of our comfort zones, making sacrifices and embracing challenges. Yet, as we yield to his guidance, we experience the transformative power of God working in and through us. The Apostle James emphasizes the importance of obedience in James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Obedience is not just acknowledging God's will. It is actively living it out in our thoughts, words and actions. Today, let us reflect on our own willingness to surrender to God's will. May our lives be characterized by a humble obedience that echoes the words of Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. As we cultivate the habit of obedience, may we find joy and fulfillment in aligning our lives with the divine purpose set before us. May the Holy Spirit empower us to walk in obedience, trusting that God's will is always for our ultimate good. Amen. 5. Bearing Spiritual Fruits Dear beloved community, let us now turn our focus to the fifth habit that characterizes a person filled with the Holy Spirit bearing spiritual fruits. Have you ever considered the fruits that blossom in a life surrendered to the Holy Spirit? As we explore this habit, let us turn to the words of Jesus in John 15. 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me you can do nothing. Bearing spiritual fruits is not a passive outcome of faith. It is an active manifestation of the Holy Spirit's work within us. In Galatians 5, 22, 23, the Apostle Paul beautifully describes these fruits. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Each of these fruits represents a facet of God's character that is cultivated within us as we walk in step with the Holy Spirit. Love is the foundation, joy and peace are its companions, and the rest are the blossoms that adorn a life connected to the true vine, which is Christ. The metaphor of the vine and branches illustrates our dependence on Christ for the vitality of our spiritual life. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, we too are called to abide in Christ, drawing strength and sustenance from Him. As we reflect on these fruits, let us recognize that they are not merely for personal benefit, but are meant to bless and impact those around us. Jesus urges us in Matthew 5.16, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Bearing spiritual fruits involves intentional choices and a continual reliance on the Holy Spirit. It is about allowing God's transformative power to shape our character, attitudes, and interactions with others. Today, let us assess the fruits evident in our lives. Are we cultivating love, joy, peace, and the other fruits of the Spirit? May our lives be a testament to the work of the Holy Spirit drawing people to Christ through the beauty of his character displayed in us. As we cultivate the habit of bearing spiritual fruits, may our lives become like a well-tended garden, radiating the fragrance of God's love and grace. 
May the Holy Spirit empower us to bear fruit abundantly, bringing glory to our Heavenly Father. Comment Amen if you believe. 6. Fellowship with Believers Dear brothers and sisters, let us now explore the sixth habit that characterizes a person filled with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with believers. Have you ever considered the significance of community in the Christian journey? As we delve into this habit, let us turn to the words of the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 10.25. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Fellowship with believers is not a mere social activity. It is a vital component of our spiritual growth. The Christian journey was never meant to be a solo expedition, but a communal pilgrimage where we support and uplift one another in our faith. The early Christian community, as depicted in the Book of Acts, provides a powerful example of believers coming together in fellowship. Acts 2.42 describes their devotion to fellowship, breaking bread together, and praying, a model that illustrates the importance of shared spiritual life. In Ephesians 4.16, the Apostle Paul emphasizes the interconnectedness of believers within the body of Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does its work. Fellowship is the glue that binds us together, creating a unified and resilient body. Participating in the life of a faith community provides avenues for encouragement, accountability, and mutual edification. It is within the context of fellowship that we share our joys, bear one another's burdens, and spur each other on in the race of faith. Jesus, in Matthew 18.20, assures us of his presence when believers gather, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Our collective worship, prayer, and study of God's Word in fellowship create a unique space where the Holy Spirit can move among us. In a world often characterized by isolation and individualism, the habit of fellowship stands as a counter-cultural expression of unity and love. As we gather with believers, we reflect the beauty of God's diverse and united family. Now this is the time for powerful prayer, Heavenly Father, Creator of all things, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging your sovereignty and majesty. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and in your presence we find peace and refuge. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift of life and the countless blessings you bestow upon us each day. In moments of joy, we see your hand at work, and in times of trial, we feel your comforting presence. You are the source of all goodness, and we lift our hearts in gratitude for your unending love and grace. Father, we confess our shortcomings and sins before you, knowing that your mercy is boundless. Thank you for the forgiveness we find in the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Cleanse us, renew us, and guide us along the path of righteousness, creating us a pure heart and a steadfast spirit, that we may reflect your character in our daily lives. Lord Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we marvel at your selfless love demonstrated on the cross. Your sacrifice brings us salvation and eternal life. As we ponder the depth of your love, inspire us to love others with the same sacrificial and unconditional love. Teach us to forgive as we have been forgiven and to extend grace to those around us. Holy Spirit, our comforter and guide, dwell within us and empower us to live according to your will. Grant us discernment and wisdom to navigate the challenges of life. Illuminate the path you've set before us, and may your light shine through us, drawing others to your transformative love. Lord, we lift up our families, friends, and communities to your care. May your protective hand be upon them, and may they experience the fullness of your blessings. Heal the brokenhearted, comfort the grieving, and bring hope to those in despair. Be present in the lives of those who are facing illness, adversity, or uncertainty. We pray for our leaders, both in the church and in the world. Grant them wisdom, integrity, and a heart for justice. May they seek your guidance in their decisions, striving for peace and equity among nations. 
Lord, we intercede for those who are suffering, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Bring healing and restoration to those in need, and may they find solace in your unfailing love. As we engage in our daily endeavors, help us to be salt and light in the world. May our words and actions reflect your love, compassion, and truth. Use us as instruments of your peace, spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. In times of uncertainty, we anchor our trust in you. Your promises are true and your faithfulness endures forever. May our faith be unwavering and may we draw strength from your word, knowing that you are with us always. Lord, we continue to lay our concerns before you, trusting that you hear the cries of our hearts. In a world often filled with strife and division, we pray for unity. Unite your church, Lord, across denominations, cultures, and nations. May we stand as a testament to the power of your love to overcome all barriers. We lift up missionaries and those spreading your word globally. Strengthen them, protect them, and grant them the courage to proclaim the gospel boldly. May your word reach the unreached, and may hearts be open to receive the message of salvation. Father, we bring before you those who are facing economic challenges, unemployment, or financial strain. Provide for their needs according to your riches in glory. Instill in us a spirit of generosity and compassion that we may be your hands and feet to those in need. As we navigate the complexities of our world, grant us discernment in our interactions. May our conversations be seasoned with grace and truth, reflecting the love of Christ. Help us to be ambassadors of reconciliation, promoting understanding and empathy. Lord, we pray for the younger generation, the future leaders and influencers of our world. Guide them in their journey, protecting them from worldly influences that may lead them astray. Instill in them a passion for justice, a heart for the marginalized, and a commitment to follow you wholeheartedly. We intercede for those who are imprisoned or oppressed, both physically and spiritually. Break the chains that bind them, O Lord, and bring them into the freedom found in Christ. May the captives be set free, and may the oppressed experience the liberation that comes from knowing you. In times of joy, may we give thanks to you, recognizing that every good gift comes from above. Help us not to take blessings for granted, but to acknowledge your hand in every aspect of our lives. Cultivate in us a heart of gratitude that overflows into worship. We conclude this prayer by echoing the words of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May this prayer offered in faith and unity be a sweet fragrance in your presence. We entrust our lives and the concerns of this world into your loving hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Comment Amen. If you believe that this prayer will help in your life, subscribe this channel for more video like this video and share this video in your friends and family.